morning, YouTube. I'm in Job 21, 22, and 23 today. Job is still in this uh, little bit of a why me situation. He tells his buddies, he says, bear with me. Let me just say what I got to say, and then you can go back to mocking me. Job addresses the wicked here in, in chapter 21. He says, their bulls never fail to breed, meaning their wealth continues to grow. Uh, they watch their children play. They have prosperity in their in their kids, and many many uh, generations follow. And they won't know part of God. Verse sixteen, he says, they think their prosperity is their own doing, but I'll have no part of this. I'll have no part of this way of thinking. Job here is questioning from his perspective why God doesn't punish or seem to punish the wicked. Um, and we know from Proverbs. The wicked often get away with their, there's a way that seems right to man, but in the end, leads to death. See, again, we have that final picture. We have the full perspective of the Bible, the full perspective of Jesus, the full perspective of the cross, of redemption. So you can live a sinful life here on earth, but ultimately, there'll be a day of judgment where you'll come and you'll stand before a holy, righteous uh, God and you will plead your case and we will all come up guilty except for the fact that it's who you know. Did you know Jesus? Had you accepted his free gift, his call for redemption, you believe that he took your penalty on the cross. He paid your price. 22, Eliphaz is up for his third and final response, his third and final speech. There's always truth in what the friends are saying, but it's a dim perspective. There's some bad theology in here. Uh, verse 4, it says, Is it because you're so pious he accuses you and brings judgment against you? No, it's because of your wickedness. There's no limit to your sins. He's telling this to Job. Eliphaz Again, he, he lays on the assumption, and people do this in, a, in our lives. We possibly do this to people. You must have done this. You must have lent money and demanded security. You must have refused water to the thirsty. You must have sent widows away empty-handed. I call this presenting doubt. Okay, There was no proof that Job had done any of this. But if someone presents doubt in speaking about you, or you do this to someone... That's wrong. If he did this, well, then he's, he's capable of doing that. Or if she said this, then she must have said that. That's a false thought. See, Job's friends thought that uh, the outward appearance, the suffering of Job, or a person's consequences directly related to God's favor in their life. All right, But that's not the way the Bible works. God, Jesus didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. God looks at the heart. When Samuel was selecting the next king after Saul, he went through all of Jesse's sons. And um, he said, this must be the one. Because he was handsome and big and strong. But God says, I don't look at outward appearances. I look at the continues in chapter 22 talking about the wicked too it's counter to what job is saying verse 16 of 22 says uh they were snatched away in the prime of their life talking about the wicked whereas job says uh in in 21 do they ever have trouble in uh chapter 22 verse 21 submit to god and have peace eliphaz again is thinking job has some secret life of sin but um, bad things do happen to good people. Your circumstances shouldn't affect your relationship with God. Because circumstances is happenstance. That has to do with happiness. Okay, Whereas joy comes from the Lord. Knowing God and having peace with God. The peace that surpasses all understanding can bring you joy and peace and comfort in horrific, horrific times. Uh, verse 20, turn to God. You'll succeed in whatever you do. 
That's name it and claim it. Well, that's the prosperity gospel. That's a false thought as well. There's wealthy, wicked people out there. And there are people in poverty that are some of the most godly people that I know. Chapter 23, Job 23. Job starts out with, I'll try hard not to groan aloud. I'm trying not to complain. And then in verse 3 and following, it says, If I only knew where to find God, I would lay out my case. I would listen to his reply. See, Job didn't know about the meeting between God and Satan. He doesn't know what to repent of. He just thinks he's being punished by God. That was the mindset of the ancient Near East at the time. And remember, this is around the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we think. And uh, Job just doesn't know uh, what to repent of, what is the cause of all his pain. Uh, verse 7, honest people can reason with him, so I would forever be acquitted by my judge. It says, Job looks in every direction, north, south, east, and west, but he can't find him. Verse 10, but he knows where I am, and that's where we are today. God knows where you are, and we can go to God anytime. The Holy Spirit, if you're a believer in Jesus, that he died for you and rose from the grave, the Holy Spirit dwells inside of you as that seal, as that guarantee, so we know where to go to find God. We go uh, directly to him, directly to the throne. And when he tests me, he will find me as pure as gold. Okay, then at the end of 23, Job becomes fearful. Maybe maybe about what he said a little bit, the possible um, outcome of what he's saying. Uh, he will do whatever he has planned. Speaking of God, God will do. He controls my destiny. I am terrified in his presence. Darkness is all around me. Job goes back and forth in self-pity, much like us. We feel sorry for ourselves. We get down and we turn to God. So he's having all these mixed emotions. He's very human, just like us. And But we have a perspective from the Bible. We know what happened, what is going to happen, and what's happening now in the lives of all believers. So don't be fearful of this world, of what the circumstances you're seeing out there in social media and other places. Uh, I just pray that you be in God's Word. A great place to read today is Psalm 73. It talks about the... Um, wicked and suffering and such as that. God bless you. Like, subscribe, and share if this has been a blessing to you.